my name is Marilyn Chen, and I currently work as the Park Pride Community Building Intern. And uh, I'm currently a second year undergraduate at Georgia Tech, and I study industrial engineering. So that's about me. And so about the check-ins, they're, so they're, they're annual. And the whole point of them is to basically collect your, your information about what's happened over the past year in your parks and to develop ways for us to improve on what like, Park Pride can do, as well as like providing resources or contacts or anything else you guys need. So your feedback is extremely valuable to us and we thank you if you participated. Well, it looks like the poll is not working on my end. So um, we will just move on. And <laughs> if you want to share your screen and you can start your presentation. And I will let all of you know, um, you know, feel free to jump in and ask any questions as we go through each of the slides. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. OK. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right, let's get started then. Okay, so this first section is just the introduction. So who responded? We got a total of 41 different responses from different Friends of Park groups. And that's, that represents about 27% of all total Friends of Park groups across uh, Atlanta, DeKalb, Tucker, and Brookhaven. Um, and if you look on the graph on the right, that represents the individual percentages for each city or county. So we got the highest response rate from City of Atlanta and Tucker. Yeah. So that's where most of the data is coming from. Okay. Oh, and I just wanted to mention if you guys have any questions like during any point of this presentation, just stop me and you, you can ask. Okay. Uh, and this next section, I talk about the general themes, which uh, are impacting community improvement and maintenance and engaging public officials. And we'll get to more of the details. Okay, so this section is the in-depth analysis portion. And in this section, we'll go through every question and look at you, you guys' responses. Okay, so which of the following activities does your group do for your part? Um, so for this section, you guys mostly respond in maintenance and that's mostly with your city or county. Um, and yeah, so I think one interesting thing to note for this section is the park activation is the lowest. And I think that's mostly due to COVID or you guys have said that's most of the reason why, but it's definitely, I think will become a much bigger focus in later years. <clears throat> okay, uh, so this question is, which advocacy and civic engagement strategies are effective? So for this question, you, you guys talked about the communicating with public officials, and this is with the Parks Department, City Council representatives, MPU, and neighborhood associations. Um, and we'll get to an, another slide later on that will talk about exactly like how to co communicate and form a better relationship. Um, so 74% of you mentioned communicating with public officials, and 51% of you mentioned social media campaigns. So the most commonly mentioned I saw were emailing uh, on Facebook, Nextdoor, and neighborhood newspaper. And 28% of you mentioned engaging the community and other parks. So this would include mostly hosting park events or meetings with other parks. Uh, and I also would like to note that since the survey is kind of like open-ended, that these percentages may not completely accurately reflect uh, each Park group's response because uh, I only included it if it was explicitly mentioned, but you might have just not men mentioned it. All right, uh, so this question is, how does your group accept funds? So most of you, about 61% of you, said that you are a fiscal sponsorship through Park Pride. 26% uh, of you have a fiscal sponsorship through another organization, or sorry, 26% uh, of you is a 501c3. 8% uh, of you have a fiscal sponsorship through another organization, and 5% of you accept non-tax deductible donations. 
So uh, as a follow-up question, uh, if you selected fiscal sponsorship through another organization, which organization were you referring to? So if anyone wants to just like talk about this point, I'll open the floor. Or if, if no one falls under the section, then we can move on as well. Okay, then I'm gonna move on. All right, so this section, or this question is, how has your group impacted the park and community? So I'm happy to say that most of you, a, high, a very high majority of you said that you made a positive impact in both your park and community. So for your park, that would be volunteer work, like removing invasive species, or overgrowth litter and planting trees, uh, hosting programs and events, which include fundraising and community events and physical improvements. And for the community side, uh, most of you also mentioned increasing awareness and engagement in the park overall, increased engagement from different groups such as youth, seniors, and those with disabilities, and increased quality of experience for those who use the park. Okay, and also for this question, we have a few quotes. So uh, 10 years ago, it was a closed overgrown park. Our group of volunteers helped open it up by adding parking benches, tables, kiosks, et cetera. With Park Pride's help, we have transformed the park in many ways, removing a playground subject to sewage overflows to creating sidewalks and nature trails, allowing visitors to connect with one another in other parks. We have also worked with other organizations such as the Atlanta Audubon Society and the Chattahoochee Riverkeeper to improve the water quality and wildlife habitat within the park. We made a, a significant impact on the park's environmental health by removing invasive species, marking and removing debris from trails, and educating the community about invasive species. So these are just some of the achievements you guys have done, but I'm sure you all have something to be proud of. All right, so this next section is for COVID-19 impacts. And uh, most of you mentioned uh, that you canceled volunteer days or allowed social distance volunteering recently, uh, canceled fundraising events and meetings or made the meetings virtual. Uh, and another interesting point to bring up is a lot of you also mentioned that more people are using the park overall, which I think is great, especially that more people are aware of it now and they can use it even after COVID times. Okay, so for this one, it's, it's about connections to other FOP groups. Um, and a vast, majority, a vast majority of you talked about uh, knowing at least one other FOP person and that they have made an impact. Okay, so for the impact by other FOP groups, you guys mentioned collaborating on projects and visioning, exchanging ideas, resources, and contacts and introducing each other to ideas regarding fundraising, park improvements, and increasing efficiency. I think uh, communicating with other FOP groups is particularly helpful, and a lot of you mentioned this because uh, you're, you're going through similar experiences and there may be a group with more experience who can help you out, so I, it's very important. All right, so uh, this question is, how has Park Pride impacted your work? So on the positive side, we, we have uh, our grant program, volunteer program, our workshops, our tool shed, uh, our networking, fiscal sponsorship, and being able to support you all. And for the insufficient side, a lot of you guys mentioned that it's very di difficult obtaining support from the county or city, which we know <laughs> is sometimes uh, very hard to get them to respond. Um, but I think, or since Park Pride is not really di directly connected to like the Parks Department, that it's, it's sort of the responsibility that should fall on them. So that's, it, it's kind of hard for us to be like the, the liaison. But okay, I'm, I'm gonna talk about how to better communicate with public officials in this slide. So here are a few points that 
um, I got from reading your responses is I think the, the most successful people who connect with their public officials form a direct relationship with them. So that's if it's possible for, for, for you to have their phone numbers or personal emails to be able to directly communicate with them and also keeping in frequent contact about your park and your efforts and not only when you have questions or need assistance. I think just being able to like form a connection with them makes it uh, more likely that they will respond and take a more personal interest in your park. And also the second point is if possible, try to attend any public or local government meetings. And uh, I, I have a link for MPU meetings in Atlanta because I know those are public and widely available. So if any of you guys are in Atlanta and you're interested, you can put that link once we send out this PowerPoint and uh, go to some if you're interested. Okay, so for this question, it's asking for the satisfaction with Park Pride, and most of you said that you are satisfied, which we're very happy about. Um, and some of the quotes are, Park Pride made it much easier for us to get volunteers for the park, funded two projects with small change grants, and makes the county approval process for projects smoother by facilitating it. We wouldn't be here without Park Pride. Park Pride provides vast amounts of resources, reliable support and employees, and help us do the visioning program. So what do you need to fulfill your vision for your park? So about 36% of you mentioned like needing the county or city to respond to requests to build new physical improvements quickly or complete your enough grant projects and maintaining the park more. Uh, about 36% of you talked about needing more grants or fundraising opportunities and information regarding outside grants. About 19% of you talked about wanting contacts of those who can help complete specific projects with, of other FOP groups or company contacts to receive funding. 17% uh, of you mentioned needing more information and resources regarding park design, fundraising, and programming ideas and how to better serve the community. And lastly, 14% of you mentioned wanting more or consistent volunteers for workdays and projects. Uh, and for some of these, we're definitely working towards it. Uh, so keep on the lookout for more information. <laughs> okay, and this last question is, please tell us anything else you'd like to share. So these are some more quotes. Uh, it's a joy working with Park Pride. We are grateful for the support we've received. We are appreciative of all that Park Pride does for us. We would like to see more to cap like this sessions. We love Park Pride. Having dedicated volunteer coordinators was very helpful, so it'd be nice to have that role filled again in the future. All right, so the section is the conclusion. So this slide, I compiled a list of the most popular Park Pride programs and, and events, if you guys are not familiar with it. Um, and each of these has a link uh, that links to our website for more information. Uh, you can also just go to our website at parkpride.org and then just type in anything in the search bar and you should usually be able to come up with a lot of information regarding that. And thank you for attending. Good. Very good. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, so it looks like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just lost my notes. So I know that's a lot um, of information. And you know, if there's a slide that you would like Marilyn to go back to, um, feel free. Um, but my you know, first question, just to kind of you know, get the discussion going is, was there anything in that um, information that you found either surprising, intriguing, or um, even troubling? I was curious about the non-tax deductible donations. Why are they non-tax deductible? I, I don't recall how they were set up before. So that that's asking the question if there's anyone that doesn't collect, that they, like when they um, fundraise for things, they're basically accepting money that goes into like a regular bank account, but it's not tied to any nonprofit. So then they're not, not, they're not tax deductible essentially. 
Um, I know that there's some groups that might have that in addition to a fiscal sponsorship account, just because it's easier in terms of paperwork for smaller dollar amounts. Um, and you know, with some of the, the more recent tax changes, I could see how that might not be you know, as beneficial for those smaller um, donations and things along okay. those lines, because yeah. our fiscal sponsor program is a 5% administrative fee. Okay, but if, if they're set up as a 501c3 organization, which some, some of the friends groups are, they could accept donations and be tax deductible, I guess. Yes, yes. So that's for ones that do not have a fiscal sponsorship with us and are not a 501c3. Oh. It might just be, you know, and there are some groups that, you know, don't regularly do fundraising if they're just kind of, you know, accepting food donations for volunteer projects or things like that. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. No worries. I, I just found, I found the quotes very telling, where I could have literally written every one of those quotes. And I sat up and went, oh, wow, it looks like I, they quoted, no, that's definitely not me. And then the next one would come up and I'm like, literally, I wondered if, if everyone else felt that way because they, they were literally like talking about how our park was closed and abandoned for 10 years and without park pride, helping with kiosks. I was just like having a deja vu and it's someone else's park. Mm -hmm. And then a few times that happened. Did that happen to everyone else? Yeah, I would think that was a common theme with a lot of groups that, you know, got interested in their park, but didn't have a lot of support to get them opened up or approved and Park Pride provided that vehicle. We, we yeah. see it over and over again. Yeah, it was great. That was really refreshing to see, Marilyn. So thank you for putting out those quotes. And I realized that we've all been in the same boat and uh, we're swimming and rowing along together and we're still doing it. So that's great. Yep. And I, I think that's a good point is that we didn't, aren't sharing this with you to sort of like toot our own horns, but really so that you guys can see, um, you know, where you kind of fall with all of the other groups and get a better understanding of that. And so, you know, one of the prompt questions that I had for discussion was like, is this information validating? And it sounds like for Pam, the answer um, is yes. And so, I mean, I'm wondering if there's anyone else that has any, you know, questions, you know, is there anything else that you would want to know? Um, thinking back to some of the questions that you might have answered or some of the um, responses that we maybe didn't look at in the, in the analysis. I, I was curious that nobody mentioned problems with homelessness and uh, the parks in the Old Fourth Ward have a, a big problem with urban camping and, and people in them uh, even after regular park hours are, are allowed. And it's just a really hard problem because you can't go in and, and as, a, yeah, as an individual try to, to ask people to leave. Um, and it's difficult. The police are just overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm surprised nobody mentioned homelessness in the uh, in the interviews. Marilyn, do you recall anyone mentioning that, and maybe it just didn't end up in the final? I don't recall anyone mentioning it. Yeah, yeah they're very lucky. <laughs> I mean, I know that there are many friends groups that mention that, um, you know, just in our conversations. And, you know, I think it's, it's good to see that even as much as we try to, you know, encompass um, everything, it's this process is never going to be perfect. And there's always going to be things that don't come up. Um, and so I think lack of, you know, a response doesn't necessarily mean that it's not the case. And um, so one of my, my other questions relating to that is, you know, how can we make this um, more effective or more valuable for you guys? You know, is there questions that maybe we should have asked that we didn't? Or, you know, is there a way that we could present this information that would be helpful for you? I think Catherine brings up an excellent point, because if that was sort of fed to me, I would go, oh, yeah, of course. What am I saying? We find uh, tents in the backs of our parks. 
we've chased off people. I've had one jump out and scare me while he ran away. I mean, like we, we've all got it, but if it didn't reflect in the overview, I think it was that it might not have spawned thought while we were just clicking through this survey and that Kayla, I would add something hinting at it so we can have our brains go, oh yeah, that's a really good point how can you help us with that? Or what should we do? Or how can each friends of group give each other examples of, of how it might help? Uh, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, the, Catherine. That's pretty much, Linda can attest with, the, with this, that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And that is one of the most effective ways that you can get police to go around your park is the, you know, constant, uh, I don't want to call it, you know, nagging, but it, it's letting them know every single time. And they want to know every single time. That's interesting because we've had it where you've heard from us again, or you're right with it. And they're like, yes, it's totally fine. We're adding it to the file. So definitely say, keep saying something to your police department. Is, is Ranger Lembot still working? I mean, I don't know who is still employed during for, uh, COVID and who's been furloughed. Do you know, is he still working? As far as I understand, um, <laughs> Officer Lambeau um, in DeKalb County is, is still working. Um, I'm not, I know that um, they are operating at about 50% staffing capacity, um, but uh, at the Citizens Advisory Board meeting on Tuesday night, Director Ellis did mention that, you know, there's, sort of the you know different tiers of uh, staff um, that are considered like essential and I know that maintenance was one of those he didn't mention the park rangers specifically though um, but that is a good question um, you know and I would say you know we can or and or you could you know email director Ellis uh, and confirm that information yeah and Chuck did mention okay. he, he would like to have more people come back on uh, if not full-time, then close to full-time, but the CEO is discouraging that at this point. So Chuck is really trying to get people back. As, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot more activity in the parks. People with nothing else to do and they're getting out. We see that in the Nature Preserve in my neighborhood and Medlock Park. But uh, So the uh, trash is piling up in some places and the work is needing, you know, needed to be done. Uh, but he is, his hands are tied a little bit by that. I would say, and it's probably only going to be valid during this particular problem with the quarantine and Parks is not reserving any of the fields for play, but for the first time in 12 years, and I overlooked the football field at Central Park that's, that's used constantly for soccer, even when it's raining, um, and used for, uh, I guess, uh, small little kids football games and stuff like that. For the first time, there's actual live turf growing on that field and you can't see dirt, it's green. And I, honest to God, I almost wanna say, never open that field again. It's just both of our fields, the football field in Central Park and, and the, the uh, pardon me, the um, kickball field and open field where they have music events. The green, the green grass is lush. And I, I can only say it's because we don't have team and, and league play. Uh, and people are respecting, you know, the fact that they're not chewing it up when it's wet. Um, it makes a big difference. And I know it can't be like that forever, but it sure is nice to look at. I don't know if anybody else had any positive things to say about having parks during COVID-19, but that's my one big trigger. Well, I'd like to add, we're seeing more people in our parks. We're also seeing them walking more. And experts are indicating this is a new normal. They have found relief during COVID-19 by doing these things, and these habits won't go away. We're going to see more people in our parks, and that's a good thing. It is a good thing, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. So any, any last thoughts um, or questions about the 
the check-ins, the process, or you know the the data um, that Marilyn has presented. So I'm going to make one yes. more. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, the biggest thing is just putting it into action. You know, I noticed things like, okay, we need connections to people in the parks. Connection. I mean, like you know, parks department. We need connections to waste management, to uh, watershed, to works department, to you know, all these different things. And having sort of a cheat sheet of these people where who to contact if there's hints on like okay this is a better person to contact this person's more geographical correct this person's more planning correct because that's a great point yeah, okay. and definitely something that we've talked about uh putting together a, a you know contact sheet um for you guys to be able to see all of those um, names, um, but I do know that you know on an individual level, if you reach out to us, we try to you know put you into contact with those specific people. But I know that sometimes you might not know, you know who to contact or you know where to go. And I think that you know Kelvin's example was was a good one about the tree. Of you know you go through like the regular channels and you know what happens when you know you're not getting a response and. So there are, there are times that, you know, we can definitely try to put you in touch with someone, you know, a real person. Um, and then it's up to you to kind of take that and build those relationships, as Marilyn was saying, and um, moving that forward. So that's definitely something that we, you know, have on our, have on our long list um, that we've thought about in terms of making that information easier for you guys to find. Um, but also, you know, there's the, the question of like, which contacts um, are we allowed to share? And we'd have to get that, you know, obviously a, approved by each of the individual divisions um, and parks departments. And I know that in some cases, like in, in Tucker, where it's a much smaller operation, there's one person um, to reach out to, but obviously in city of Atlanta, there's the district managers um, and in DeKalb, there's, there's various people that you might reach out to for, for different things. So thank you for that, Jim. And I guess the next question would be, yeah, in your questionnaire, I think the second thing down was connection to other parks. And so for someone that sits on the edge of Atlanta, where, you know, the other side is the other people, <laughs> you know, connecting into, for me, it would be Smyrna and Cobb County and having that relationship across the border and how do we, who do we talk to across the border? That's a good question. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, sometimes there's other organ, there's other parks departments um, outside of Atlanta and DeKalb that do attend the, the conference. Um, and so that might be, you know, a, a good place, yeah, to connect with them. Um, and I'm gonna give a brief update on that, uh, but I will try to launch this last poll. Are you able to respond? And if this is anonymous, so if your your response is the first one, it's okay. I won't know. So does anyone have any updates while you guys are filling that out that you would like to um, share with everyone? Kayla? Yes. Well, uh, construction is going on at Peters, Peters Park, which is wonderful. It's um, been a long time coming. We've been waiting quite a while, but they are um, have um, taken up all the pavement and they have cut down some trees so they're going to start with the um, getting the parking lot done first so it's just good to see some new pavement <laughs> there's a few little pavement going on so I live right across the street from the park so I love sitting on my porch and watching them work uh, the different machines so it's kind of nice so Hopefully uh, this this time next year we will be able to gather again, but who knows? But um, but have seen still even with the park being with the COVID, like they like someone was saying they're still walking our track. 
that's what I'm liking there. People are coming that I haven't seen before and they are just coming to walk the track. They can't really do it now because of the construction, but before they were coming and walking the track or using the pavilion for lunches and Saturday mornings, families were coming to sit under the pavilion to have breakfast. So that was just very, this is what I always wanted to see. So that's, in that way, COVID has got us some recognition. You know, a little small part tucked back, but um, people have found us and they're using us positively. So it's very good for the community. Well, I can't wait to see the brand new park that you guys are going to You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other updates that you guys have to share? So we are not hosting an August park meeting um, because that would generally be the second Wednesday, um, which is just before the conference. And we really want to encourage you to attend the Parks and Green Space Conference, which is now virtual. Um, so I dropped the link there um, with information. If you are interested, we do have a community rate. So please reach out to us at friends at parkpride.org um, and let us know if you are interested in that. Um, if you had a registration, you should have received some communications um, that that will be transferred. Um, and so we'll be excited to see all of you virtually and hope that you know we're all able to see each other in person again soon. Um, and our next green space gathering is going to be um, at the end of August, and that is going to uh, sort of reflect on the conference. So even if you're not able to make it, then you can kind of hear uh, what others have, um, you know, what they found to be the most interesting and helpful. And so I encourage you to attend that. And I'll also drop the link for that event here in the, the chat. Any last thoughts, comments, questions, anything you guys would like to share? Well, it's good to see everybody. Same. Yes, it is. Well, I didn't, you didn't see me today, but it's good to hear everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get to see your, your wonderful background with the, the bright uh, colors of all the flowers. Yeah, I'm not looking the best, so my bright colors were happy, but I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate all of you joining us. Um, and just so you know, we will be sending the um, follow-up uh, presentation um, that Marilyn shared in the Friends of the Park email. That should go out no later than Monday, um, but hopefully uh, Saturday, which is the first. So keep an eye out for that. Feel free to share with others. And again, we really appreciate you guys giving your feedback to help us um, with shaping the future of the program um, so that we can really make sure that we're providing the resources that you need. Yes, thank you all very much for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you, yes. thank you Marilyn. <laughs> yes, thank you, Marilyn. Yes, Marilyn, thank you. Good job, Marilyn. Thank you. Bye-bye.